Ancient building techniques are an excellent subject to explore if one wishes to understand just how advanced our hidden ancestors were. Additionally, it allows one to get a true insight into the contradictions currently upheld by academic institutes the world over. There still exists an extraordinarily diverse array of building techniques. Some, interestingly, appear to overlap even older advanced methods. For example, a stone boring technology, seemingly used upon many ancient monuments, in many cases it appears to have been deliberately used to slightly damage these ancient stones, leaving them etched with uncanny marks, possibly in an attempt to also leave their mark to prove their past existence, later to be realized by us, now laying within their very distant future. We feel that these marks, along with many other aspects of these ancient sites, indicates that many ancient civilizations have been and gone here upon our Earth. Ancient metal clamps used to seat enormous stones, precision machine-cut blocks, some left within quarries, clearly indicating machine manipulation, impossible block building, effortlessly fitting random-sized blocks perfectly together. Yet the most enigmatic of these ancient building features, which many suspect was indeed somehow connected to the construction of said sites, has to be the protuberances. Rarely mentioned within history books, yet these protuberances are present on many of the most ancient of block structures, which can be found all over the world. No one seems to know what these protuberances were placed upon these structures for. The biggest of these, undoubtedly carved into the still in situ megaliths at Yangshan Quarry, a feature we have previously noted and pondered over. Not only do these enigmatic notches suggest a past, world-going, highly advanced civilization having once prospered here upon our planet, but a feature known as the Boss Mark, found deep within the Great Pyramid of Khufu, may link, for the first time, the builders of the Great Pyramids ancient structures found elsewhere on Earth. Furthermore, the methods used by the pyramid builders are, interestingly, the same methods used by builders of the other sites containing protuberances. This strategic building method, meaning that their ruins have outlived, we feel, many other ancient civilizations now lost to history. Their capability to move such mind-bogglingly huge stone blocks and their ability to create such erosion-resistant structures, indicate to us that the builders of these sites may have lived an unimaginably long time ago, and probably chose to create such earth-shifting structures in a bid to indeed survive the eons. Were they doing so in an attempt to leave their legacy on our planet? Or maybe they were, and are, still trying to tell us something. Only time will tell. The Pyramid of Menkura, the smallest yet by no means least interesting of the Great Pyramids of Giza, claimed to have been built by the Egyptian pharaoh Menkura some 4,000 years ago. The pyramid's origins, however, like the many other giant and perfectly carved structures and statues found throughout the Giza Plateau, no one seems to be able to explain how or why such figures within known, well-studied history accomplished such feats. With the entrance to the Chapel of the Cult, exposing just how much of a challenge this construction would have been for our copper-welding ancestors some 4,000 years ago. Lined with megalithic sandstone blocks, with some well over 100 tons in weight, the remains of basalt casting stones strewn around their feet, either disturbed by invading parties or simply fallen from where they once stood, in front of the megalithic blocks, all now exposed to the elements, with additional styles from other, now-lost civilizations littered all around the pyramid, indicative of its rediscovered importance by other now-lost civilizations, who we feel clearly came and went since the pyramid's original constructions. This extraordinary section of the ruins are predictably rarely discussed or studied. We believe this due to the inexplicable nature of the surrounding ruins, in addition to further supporting claims that the casting stones found upon the pyramids 
are not only covering megalithic blocks of an even larger scale, but were a later addition, just like that of the unfinished polygonal masonry, making up additional casing stones around the entrance of the Menkura pyramid itself. Furthermore, Menkura also contains inner chambers, just like that of the world-famous Cheops. Yet rumors that only Cheops possess such tunnels persist to the modern day, and one wonders why. Why was Menkura clearly focused on by several different conservation efforts? Why is it the only pyramid with Peru-style polygonal casing stones? Who could have possibly built the entrance tunnel? or indeed, the pyramids themselves. And why is the pyramid largely, and it would seem purposefully, overlooked? We find the possible motivations highly compelling. When it comes to the particular ancient uparts that we share, which have a simply impossible age, this, in regard to the modern chronological paradigm of man's historical origins, in which man evolved from the sea to the cave and then into modern civilization, in a supposedly already mapped out and fully understood linear fashion with no gaps whatsoever. A position made to attain undeserved authority over historical teachings. Thus, when an object turns up which contests these so-called already established factual ideologies, it is either simply dismissed or those who oppose such possibilities of its existence go to great length to discredit its authenticity in any way. Furthermore, it must be mentioned that many more than could be contributed to coincidence have mysteriously disappeared over the years, scenarios, and events, which simply strengthen the original claims of the object's authenticity. Our next artifact of interest being no exception. Known as the Meister print, it is an artifact that many have attempted to discredit as an authentic human footprint for good reason. And when one recites the academic opposed theory regarding the dismissal of said hypothesis of human origin, it exposes how miserably said attempt was. It is simply written off as a portion of Jurassic strata, at which at some point in the distant past naturally fractured, coincidentally, into the form of a human-shaped shoe print. However, this explanation, or attempted dismissal, avoids any attempt to explain away the main feature within the print, which not only proves it was indeed a print, once made by induced pressure onto this ancient earth, but why it's claimed as an upart in the first place. Within the print, there exists a crushed trilobite, which proves this was indeed a pressed print, but also confirms an age of hundreds of millions of years. Thus, whatever made this print had a human-shaped foot, was seemingly wearing shoes or boots, and was heavy enough to crush an ancient arthropod. These facts, along with academia's miserable attempt to dismiss said upart, we therefore find highly compelling. There are many mysteries, either yet to be discovered or have, and are now shrouded in conspiracy all over the Egyptian plateau. Stories of unexplainable finds, many of which have simply vanished, all have continued to be ignored throughout the years. The several centimeters of ancient sea salt, sediment quietly removed from the lower chambers of Cheops. Chambers eventually dug out of the sands of Giza in the early 1900s. There are literally endless theories and rumors which surround this tiny concentrated area of the Egyptians' ancient wonders. There lay countless awe-inspiring sights to be seen, all equally unexplainable over the Egyptian plateau. And the discoveries of ancient tombs is not an uncommon occurrence. And although our next area of interest may be of no exception, it is in its characteristics. The outer layers of this tomb was made up of megalithic blocks of gigantic proportions, far greater than anyone can yet explain how these stones were moved, carved, and perfectly placed atop one another all over antiquity. Yet what these stones indicate is one of two things. Either the occupant of the tomb that has now been conveniently easily identified and named 
as that of Queen Kentakuis III's, was indeed an Egyptian queen. BBC News states, quote, The tomb was found in Abu Sir, southwest of Cairo, and is thought to belong to the wife or mother of Pharaoh Neferefri, who ruled 4,500 years ago. Egyptian antiquities minister Mamdo El Damidi said that her name, Kentakuis, had been found inscribed on a wall in the necropolis. Mr. Domedy added that this would make her Kentakuis III. The tomb was discovered in Pharaoh Neferefri's funeral complex. Yet, as mentioned, this tomb in particular pricked our interest due to its megalithic nature. This so-called identified queen was again either a legitimately aged 4,000-year-old mummy who used a structure already in existence, or what might make her discovery incredibly special is that she could, in fact, be a true descendant of a now lost civilization who were indeed capable of these incredible and as yet unexplainable feats found all over ancient Egypt. Regardless of opinions, we find the facts surrounding her tomb, and indeed her possible true origins, highly compelling. The University of Seville, working in collaboration with the Andalusian Institute of Historical Heritage, has conducted an intensive LIDAR survey in a historically compelling area between the Spanish coastal towns of Capasoto and Sancti Petri. Their goal was to discover the remnants of a long-written-of temple, one dedicated to ancient deities. However, what they discovered instead was an incredibly ancient, once enormous, mass dwelling. Complex, yet intelligently laid out, as if almost akin to modern-day standards of care in regard to sanitation management, food production, and quality of dwelling for its massive population's well-being. A mega-metropolis that, predictably, the academics responsible for its discovery have not only attempted to downplay the find, but also tried to claim it as merely proof of their original temple assertion. Clearly, they are merely backing the tale of events put forth by whomever funded said expedition. From the researchers themselves, quote, The survey area consisted of submerged landscape, seemingly dominated by a series of ancient marshes. Something we feel was most probably intelligently managed farmlands prior to the Great Deluge, which eventually drowned this entire mega-metropolis. Yet I digress. They continued, The study revealed a new ancient coastal landscape, with the presence of moorings, an inland port, and several large, monumental buildings." End quote. By combining data from previous anomalous discoveries, the team created a cross-section of findings, and by a process of elimination, they pinpointed an area in which to scan. Yet, interestingly, after said discoveries of the structures, they quickly and simply delimited the entire area without any further field study or investigation whatsoever. Could this rapid delimitation of the area in regards to the LIDAR scanning possibly be in an attempt to obscure the true enormity of this pre-flood ruin? During their focused investigation, they found rectangular structures some 300 by 150 meters in size. However, these discoveries contradicted their own strictly followed academic accounts of this supposedly legendary temple's whereabouts. This discovery being the mission's objective all along, yet curiously, as mentioned, any further expansion of the LIDAR investigations, academic funding has been stonewalled. Could their reluctance to continue further investigations on a mission which has already clearly cost a lot of funding due to them actually having discovered yet another complexly, intelligently, clearly advanced pre-flood megametropolis? Well, we find said possibilities and the rapid growth of independently owned LiDAR technology incredibly exciting. <laughs>